because livestock have certain preferences for plants. We try to hit those plants at the time they're most vulnerable to grazing. Right. To and that's caused some weight issues in paddocks, hasn't it? Right. Uh, once you start on it, uh, you may never get out of it. And but like any kind of breeding program, we have developed a line of goats and shown that selection for that plant is about 25% heroin. I'm at the 2025 International Rangeland Congress and I'm with John Walker and he's going to tell us a little bit about the amazing research that he's doing. John, how are you, mate? I'm fine, Tim. How are you? I'm very well. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself, mate. So, uh, I'm a researcher with Texas A&M and I'm a rangeland researcher. I work on grazing management uh, and sheep and goat production. Particularly sheep and goat production is going to be a theme of this talk that we're going to have today because you are pioneering a new type of grazing, aren't you? Yes, well, we call it targeted grazing. And uh, we know that livestock can uh, degradate uh, rangeland ecosystems. It's happened all over the world and it's for overgrazing. And, uh, but we also know that happens because livestock have certain preferences for plants. They graze the better plants and then plants that we don't want come in to replace them. Yeah. By selecting animals that will eat those plants, which oftentimes are sheep and goats because a lot of the overgrazing just happened by cattle just because we have more of them, right? Uh, we can use animals to select the plants that, have, uh, that are invasive. In our case, many of them are uh, uh, introduced plants from other uh, continents and stuff. And so, we try to hit those plants at the time they're most vulnerable to grazing to reduce them in the system. We try to graze them out so that the desired native plants will come back and replace them. So taking it back a step, we've degraded the landscape in the past through set stocking and overgrazing of, of areas mm -hmm. where the animals select for the plants that they prefer the most and others replace them that are not so edible to the animals. So we end up with a problem in the species selection that's available. We've reacted to that by introducing rotational grazing and proper grazing management to take the animals off before the resource is depleted. Right. And that's caused some weed issues in paddocks, hasn't it? Right. Yes, it has. And because there's plants that are coming in that are not preferred particularly, you know, by cattle. And so uh, often these plants are what we call chemically defended. They have uh, phytochemicals in them that cause uh, adverse reaction in the animals if they eat them. Kind of like a poisonous plant, but they, they're not necessarily poisonous. They might just get a stomach ache. Exactly, yeah. But the sheep and goats oftentimes don't. Goats have bigger livers. Uh, they pass through things through quickly, and so they can eat a lot of things that uh, other, other uh, livestock species can't. And so they will uh, direct their grazing to those plants and uh, we can uh, reduce them in the uh, rangelands. So I've got a problem with a paddock mm -hmm. on grazing cattle mm -hmm. and I've got a weed in that paddock that the cattle are not getting on top of and it's starting to take over. Yeah. You come in with targeted grazing, you're going to use different species of animal. Explain to me what targeted grazing would look like, what the strategy for that paddock would look like. Sure. So what we want to know is when that plant is most susceptible to be, to be to grazing is also when it is most palatable to the animal. Those don't always meet up exactly at the same time. We have to compromise sometimes. But we try to put the animals on there and then we graze them down pretty close lots of times. So, that so you're, you're not doing the whole pull off thing before it's finished. You want to hit right down to the ground. It, Depends. Yes and no. We can take it right down to the ground. Sometimes, though, if there's other plants that are still good that we want, we may have to pull them off, you know, in order to balance their the utilization on the plants that we're trying to uh, reduce in that pasture. So there's no one set rule in standard observation. Right. And it's a, it's a long-term thing, you know. Uh, once you start on it, uh, you may never get out of it. But the other side of that is you actually increase the total offtake of animal products uh, as compared to just cattle only grazing anyway. So you increase your productivity at the same time taking care of an invasive plant. So by grazing multiple species of animal in the same paddock, 
you're getting more productivity because you're getting animals that target different plants. What might be a weed to cattle is feed to a goat. Exactly. So you're increasing productivity and you're also causing a succession in the plant types. What happens after a while of targeted grazing, John? What are you seeing? Well, so we've seen places where uh, one of the plants I worked with a lot is called leafy spurge. And you can actually, you don't totally eliminate it, but you can reduce it from, let's just say, I've seen places that it's 80% uh, of the pasture. Cattle won't even go in there. You open it up, uh, it's fairly susceptible to grazing if you can, if something grazes it. And so the grass has come back. So that means you can increase your cattle stocking rate, but you'll probably always need a few goats out there or sheep. We can do it with either sheep or goats. Uh, and you may always need uh, a few smaller ruminants out there that prefer that uh, that weedy plant Just to, keep, to keep it down because it will come back. You know, if you go back to your old management practices, uh, what's going to happen? Same problems going to come back, right? Well, if you look at rangelands and how they've evolved, they had multiple grazing species on them. Didn't they? Oh, they didn't just yeah. have the one species. They didn't mm -hmm. just have buffalo. No, they had a whole range of other animals exactly. actively eating there. And so we need to do that in our production systems. Yes, you're actually doing some genetic research on your goats. Yeah, and it's fascinating stuff. You're taking their scat or mm -hmm. their feces. And what are you doing with that? So we use a uh, near infrared spectroscopy. We've developed calibrations where we can scan that fecal material and it tells us what percent of their diet is juniper, which is a, uh, it's not, it's a encroaching woody plant. It's yep. an evergreen uh, angiosperm plant. And so it is always been there, but now instead of being a minor part of our rangelands, it's a major part in many places. It pushes out the grass. So we wanted to develop a line of goats that preferred that plant. Goats will eat it, but we wanted to develop a line of goats that uh, preferred that plant more than the average goat. And so after a number of years of, select, of selectively breeding, using the phenotypic data is what we get from the fecal scans. We developed expected breeding values. We keep pedigree records. And like any kind of breeding program, we have developed a line of goats and shown that selection for that plant is about 25% heritable. So that's more heritable than a lot of other traits that we currently select for. Right. Yeah, it's more heritable than uh, 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 parasite resistance. Yep. Uh, about the same heritability as weaning weights and these sort of things. That okay. often so it's a very reliable EBV. Yes. But you're the first people to actually think of looking at diet selection and preference of diet in an animal to use them as a tool in a grazing system to cause succession of plant material and get rid of weeds. Yes. And in addition to that, because we have a great excess of this juniper, we actually increase carrying capacity of that pasture for these goats. <laughs> so increasing productivity yes. through breeding yeah. and reducing environmental weed. Yeah. John, you're an absolute genius, mate. The stuff that you guys are doing in the US is always fascinating. I'm a big fan and I hopefully we'll catch up with you in the future on the channel. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. That's really awesome. Guys, send this video to someone who you think needs to include goats and sheep in their cattle grazing to get on top of weeds. And if you want to find out more about what John's doing over there in Texas, there's a link in the description. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next week.